Gretzky goes back to back in Vegas. There it is. And we are in Las Vegas. It's day four, semi-final day. 96 players started playing this Predator Pro Billiard Series Las Vegas Men's Open for $100,000. $30,000 first prize. We're down to the final four. Francisco Sanchez Reese, Carlo Biato. And in the other semi-final, you have Coping Chung and Lee Van Cortesa. This is George Deche in the booth. Bringing you the live action from the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino and the CSI Expo with 700 seven foot predator tables and 18 tournament tables for the pros to play on. The game is 10 ball, races to four. If they are tied after at one set apiece, they will go, it will now go to a third and deciding set. But if that one is tied at three games apiece, it will now go to a shootout. You have Perry Anderson, your referee, racking the balls for Carlo and Francisco Sanchez. Francisco, a 32-year-old from Spain, placed second here uh, last year to Cachi in the world 10 ball. Carlo Biato, a strong, strong player, Filipino player, was First in Puerto Rico in 2022, second in Arizona in 21. Sanchez to break. To open up the set. Breaking from the side, playing the one ball in the side pocket on the right. Missed there, 10 ball almost went in, which will not count on the break. It only counts, it's early, but no, not on the break. Breaks dry, and has uh, left a shot, not much of a shot. And joining me in the booth will be Eric Horlifson. Pleasure to be with you guys again. Carlo coming off a very dramatic match in the last round. Very fortunate to be here, but some very strong shooting to be here, too. Nice safe there. Putting Ruiz in a bad spot. And Francisco Sanchez also coming off of a very, very exciting match where he defeated Federer Gorst in the quarterfinal, 4-0, 4-0. Who's done that very often, if ever? Yeah, must have been a bunch of breaking runs in sure. that match. Kind of, kind of heard it through the grapevine that he played really well. Yeah, I spoke to him prior to the match uh, when he was practicing here, and he, uh, he said, "Oh, I played good." Very, very nice guy. Very humble. He's had quite, a, quite a bit of success last year. Uh, what didn't he win last year? Went on a crazy run. Has sure. it been a little bit more quiet in the last six months, but went on a crazy yeah. run where he won the World Nine Ball Championships, the, the World Cup of Pool. Can't remember all the all the tournaments yeah, that he won. So he won about five majors in one year. And oh. think about all, all the talent around the world and how well you have to play to not f only finish well, but win the tournament in sure. those spots. And then he goes and changes... Uh, uh, Q sponsors. Who's he with now? He's with QTech. Okay. Dangerously close to scratching the side, but he's okay. We've got a lot of pool for you guys out there, you pool fans from all around the world. Uh, tomorrow would be the mixed doubles. And um, the day after, the women's showdown, 16 of the greatest women players in the world. In the showdown, which I believe will be nine ball. Yeah, one nine ball tournament of the week. What a shot. 
Will he play it in the side or take it to the corner out into the eight? Yeah, he's okay in the side. Just ended up too straight on the two there and had to come up with a, with a real big shot. He's trying to make sure he doesn't get hooked by that seven ball if he plays it in the side or in the corner, either way. He's got to get out for the seven and try to get as straight as possible so he can stay there for the five. Yeah, he'd, li he'd like to roll through past it, but the angle's going to the left too much, so he's gonna, just going to have to... He's maybe considering drawing across it. Oh, he's got plenty to hit it hard. He can hit it with any speed he wants. So he can go to the side and back again. Kind of like that. Nice shot. Wasn't the most obvious shot available, no. but it was the proper one. Only way to get straight enough on the four. for him to draw back into the angle here. Beato's route to this semifinal was through Sina Balizade in straight sets, Wu Kun Lin in a shootout, Alex Pagalayan in straight sets, Cheng Zhong Lin in straight sets, and then Tyler Steyer in a shootout. Staying in line nicely here. Nine plays ball into the side. Carlo moving a lot more comfortable at the table than he was in his last match, don't you think, Eric? Yeah, well, you know, small small edge, I think. To look at it two ways, he just went through a grueling match, which could have gone either way, but he also just came off this table about 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Nice out there for Beato. Senor Sanchez was uh, at the other, on table one, on the stream table there, facing Federer Horst. I would imagine both tables play very, very similar because they're all equipped exactly the same. That one having a bigger um, spectator arena around it than this table does. Dialyte, Rumza Puerto Rico is sponsoring both the women's and the men's Las Vegas Opens. And they have a nice display with, I think it's eight bottles of different rums. They look very enticing. I wish we could get a shot of it somewhere sure. along the line. I'm sure the winners will, have, will be tempted. Yeah. Maybe we get the display case in here. Oh, and that was Carlos's downfall, if anything, in his last match was his break. Yeah, he was about only about 50% successful, only threw in a couple breaking runs over the course of the three sets. Was breaking mainly from the side rail, chose to go from the middle there. No success. Ruiz has a window between the 6-8. Going to call the one on the side just in case, but mainly playing the cue ball behind the two. Tricky here, it's got to draw over to the angle. It's might be able to play enough right spin on it to play the cue ball into that area. There he was. Oh, look at this cue ball. Ooh, got a little unlucky there. <laughs> and how's the window? I think it's right through it. <laughs> look at his body language. Oh, yeah, really? At least he tied up the two. Yeah. 
Harlow will probably be looking to get underneath the two and play safe behind the nine here. Didn't have enough of it to pocket it. Left it in the open. Cue ball's kind of running into the eight. Tough to slow the cue ball down if you start drawing at it. There is an angle that I think to draw to the right of the eight and try to run into the two. Try. Not going to end up how he wanted. Thinnest left edge of the two available. Cue ball will be playing towards the corner in that case. Yeah, keep in mind, folks, that the 10 ball in this tournament does not count on the break. It's only. After the break, it has to be called. Could come up in this rack considering where the four yeah. is. Three is a nice blocker for Ruiz there. Didn't have much. It was only able to hit the thin side of the two. Did well out of that, out of that spot. Carlo will be trying to kick the two ball in here. Five, but call shots only. Waiting to see. Yeah, I think he'll. You like to cut here or the bank? I think he's going to be cutting at this. Cue ball is going to be running towards the nine. Unlikely to get right behind the nine. It's kind of would be okay to even run into it. from Ruiz. Going to get away with it. Uh, it just no, leaked. It, yeah, it's outside the seven. So good chance for Beato here. Every game important in these short race matches. Are the stars lining up for Carlo? You think? Seems like it so far. Yeah, by the way, the last set went, uh, I would say yes. He'll get shaped to get right. He'd love to be right there where uh, he's at for this 10 ball, for the four ball. Played into the 10. He'll probably go two rails right above the nine there and come right back to where he's at. Nicely played. Hit the hit the ten more direct or a little more thickly. It'll still pocket here. Game number two goes to Carlo Beato. Went Carlo. real first there on the on the four. That's a, that's a good shot overall. Yeah. Carlo an eight twenty nine Fargo. 11th ranked player in the world by by Fargo Francisco Sanchez Reese 842 Fargo number three Joshua Filler and I believe Feder Gorst are the only two that are above him and Senor Reese right now just uh, ran over uh, Feder Gorst with a 4 0 4 0 uh, tally 
Yeah, I wasn't able to watch that match, but you have to assume the breaking runs were over 50% if beating him by that scoreline. And when uh, Sanchez gets going, he, um, he <laughs> they come into play quite a bit. Yeah, he thrives on that. He's a, yeah. a high-gear, freewheeling type player. When things are going good for him, they go real good. Going from the side rail this time, trying to make the one. But he made the two instead, straight in on the one. Yeah, this is, this is big in the first set for Beato here. Two games ahead already, looking to get on the hill. Ideally looking for the angle where he can play above the foreign and the foreign in the short pocket. Got a little funny here where I believe he's running into it. Can still stun below it to the left. He's trying to avoid the 6-9, probably tracking through them. Could stun out and take the longer shot in the five as well. Probably a little safer play. Carlo looks much more solid this this set. He really does look much more settled. Yeah, it was just you know he he played well in the set before, but it was just a kind of set where he had to overcome set of, some adversity and ended up in his favor. Never gave up, of course, like all champions do. Played to the moment. Cue ball is going the wrong way for the seven here. He's going to decide if he wants to draw to the right of the ten or in between the eight nine. Good shot. Cue ball will be tracking over to the short side. Enough room over there, though. No traffic. Just got to avoid the nine. Cue ball's playing into the ten, but he can draw out of the angle. Gonna put a break and run on the board here. And if he gets that going, it's very dangerous. Shot there. He switched over to the side rail on this last break. I expect him to do the same on this on the next one. The auto solid for break and run there. He had one in his last set, last match, excuse me, it was in the second set against Tyler Steyer. This time around, he wins three games in a row to start things off. Not something that his opponent is used to. Yeah, flipping the script from the last match for Ruiz here.
10 ball on the break. Doesn't count. Will be spotted. No open shot on the one. One ball crosses over to the middle of the short rail easily here. Ideally getting behind the two. The cue ball. It's left an opening. <laughs> Plays what's called a sneaky save over a ball. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good play when there's another ball. The, the ball you're playing safe on is kind of in front of another ball, and you purposely leave over, leave it over that ball. That's going to keep going, and will the seven come into play? Looks like it did. Carlo can play the cue ball behind the six here. Nice shot. Oh, look at the speed on this ball. Jeez, they're just not quite getting there on the saves. Not, it's not, not like they're playing them badly. They're just not <laughs> quite ending up exactly where they want. Yeah, Carlo can't buy an inch. One inch to the left of where it's at now, and he'd be real happy. Ruiz will be going up table with the cue ball here. Good coverage on the one. Three balls too far away to be jumping. Carlos called the one in the bottom left corner pocket. Kicked with speed, didn't didn't get the result he wanted. Let's see how this free is positioned here. Francisco's looking if it passes in the pocket past the four. It's tight. Cue ball's close to that area. Getting on this view here, I believe it does. The beeping you here is the time clock. Players are on the 30 second time clock, 60 seconds after the break. And then they have one extension per game per player. Three's available on the bottom left as well. Manage that situation well. Just thinking about what angle he wants on the four. Play for the five. Staying in line nicely. Cue ball's tracking a little bit to the right here. Looks like he can hold it enough to play the six in the bottom right. Looking good for Ruiz here, and he'll be looking to catch that offensive gear that he did in the last round. Still only three games away from winning the set. After this one.
Looking real good. Yeah, it's in stroke, no doubt. Fourth game, and he takes it down to put an X on the board. Trailing one to three in his race to four. Seen Ruiz playing a couple pro billiard series, World Eight Ball particularly. He's not afraid to unleash it on the break; just hit it full power, give himself best chance of balls moving around the table and making a ball if he doesn't make the one in the side. Sanchez Reese, fourth on the Arizona Billiard Money leaderboard in 2023 with over almost $212,000. That money's getting up there. Best sure players is. in the world are making a good living now. $60,000 in his first place uh, Whirlpool Championship. $40,000 for second place in the World 10 Ball Championship that he lost to Shane Van Boney in Austria. 20,000 for the Premier League pool. Hit them well, nothing down. 40,000 for the Moscone Cup. Good year's work. Sure, a lot of 4,000, 5,000, 8,000. I'm sorry, did I say eight ball championship? That was a 10 ball championship last year, second place. He lost to Kachi. Yeah, Carla was a little trapped there. Got out of it, not exactly how he wanted, I don't think. Didn't leave Ruiz anything easy here. Francisco will be looking to play the cue ball behind the nine. Touchy shot. Got to be careful of the double hit. Behind the ten works as well, or maybe two rails behind the nine. Shot. Just close enough that I think Carl will pass up the jump. It's a decent short rail kick here. Pretty much guaranteed to hit the ball. Not much coverage down table. Half chance for Ruiz here. Gonna have to play one good positional shot to get in line with the two. Does the two pass the four? It's close. Can't really tell from this angle. Doesn't appear to. Just taking a look at it right now. Will he play the one ball on the side or in the corner? Just called the side. From the way he looked at the two, I think I think it actually goes. Kind of looked at it like positively like he was going to play it in that pocket. Follow shot there. Always tough to control the exact speed of those shots. Played it well. Little movement from the five to the six. I'll be looking at ways to shoot the six in the short pocket. It's not a good angle here to draw straight back and come one rail towards the six. Ooh, and 
unexpected miss. The shot clock was right in his backstroke there. Only explanation I can see. Maybe trying to cheat a certain part of the pocket to get an angle on the five. So Carlo with the first look to win the first set here. Tough shot here. Nothing easy about it. Playing safe. Yeah. A little too thin. Good execution there. Ruiz is going to be on a possible long bank jump. Any ball's a long way away. If you're going to jump that, you probably use your regular cue. It's going to swerve at it. I like this play. Chance to stick the cue ball down table. Jump for the cue ball in the corner. It's gone. There it goes. So Beato with a great chance here to win the first set. for the six in the short pocket. Is he going to come all the way down around the eight? Or come straight? He's going to come straight across. Sorry. Yeah, just leave an angle. Get back to the seven. Diagonal draw. Doesn't want to be too straight here. And uh, look out. He might get funny. Let's draw to the short side. Could. I think, I think he'll end up Starting it a he's, little more. Looks like he, yeah, he's trying with the short side. See how I was mentioning there, he cues to the left, and he comes over, and he comes over to the right. Mm -hmm. Like you, you thought he was following for a second, right? Because he was hitting the cueing at the left side of the ball. It looked like it to me, but then I saw him hitting, uh, aiming it on the left side, which uh, I guess would force it to the rail and come back the way it did. Mm -hmm. uh, he, or he, did he move? He, he moved. He, he moved, moved the over to the right. Over. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can see that. Yeah, just it just the way he cues the ball. But I was I was actually watching, looking out for pointers there because I've seen some of those shots that look like they're a straight back shot and they're able to force it into the rail and come off the rail. Mm. Good out here from Carlo. Well played in the first set, throwing in a break and run. Nice advantage going forward in the match. And set number one to Carlo Beato. Ruby is just, is just going to take a quick break here. We'll take a quick break as well, and we'll be right back.
All right, we're back. Francisco Sanchez on his way back into the arena. We'll bring you some stats from the first game. Uh, time at table, uh, Beato was 62%, Sanchez 38. Missed shots, I think Beato had uh, one, and so did uh, Francisco, or Sanchez. Let's see. Balls pocketed, of course, with more games won. 31 to 14 in Beato's favor. Safety efficiency, pretty close. 83% for Reese, for Sanchez, and 71% uh, for uh, Beato. There was one, one stat that I kind of wanted to take a look at here that caught my eye. And now I can't find it. What stands out to you, Eric? Balls mm -hmm. missed. Do you have that one? Balls missed. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. There, I think. Uh, yeah, one apiece. Yeah, very few mistakes from both yeah. players. I mean, really, when you're able to throw in a break and run, it's it's the effectiveness of two games because you won the game before. It's winter break, so you, you're guaranteed to put together a two-game pack at that point, right? And you're looking at half the race, so. Oh, here's the stat I, I, I missed that I wanted to kind of address is player overall performance. Beato at 8.89, and uh, Sanchez at 700. Quite a difference. Okay. And it's a you know, four to one score line, so it would. I thought Francisco missed two shots, though. Just has him down for one. Trying an aggressive kick in the side. Wasn't much else for him. Left the two in the same si side pocket that he was trying to make it in. Back at the table with an open shot, an open table. 7-8, but the four balls there to address it. The five ball nearby for position as insurance. You have to get real straight on the four here to have it be able to draw enough into the 7-8. That's what he's trying to do. He actually got two straight. I don't think he has any angle going. Oh, he does have a small angle going to the right. He'll be okay here. Actually got perfect. He'll be able to slide just a little bit off the eight, but He's got to get cleared so he can stroke. So he can, oh, nicely done. Could have split up a little better. Nothing under his control. Seven still does pocket to the bottom left. doesn't have enough room past the nine on the side, so he'll be playing around two rails in the corner here, figuring out how to avoid the ten. Might have to draw it to ensure that. Shot there. Cinching the nine on the side. Notice players really avoid the side pockets on these predator tables. They're they're not as they're they play pretty tight. I don't blame them. I hate side pockets because uh -huh. that they're, they're just so delicate when you're playing position. If you're not on the right side and you have an angle, um, you know, you got to run the cue ball around. And if it's if there's heavy traffic. Um, you can be in trouble real quick. Ooh, Caught a piece of the corner there, the side yeah, pocket. Yeah, kind of went off in the corner pocket. Yeah. 
He's trying to hit that head rail and come back towards the 10 in line with a shot. A little bit of a harder shot than he would have had. Should still be okay. Good out there from Beato. Getting a little urgent for Ruiz. Main thing he'll want to do is get his break going. That's that's his style of play. Behan will be up to break in this next game. Yeah, the loser in this uh, match, in the semifinal match, will uh, settle for seven thousand dollars. Next prize up would be second place, of course, and that would be fourteen. And up from that would be the thirty thousand for the winner with a 96 player field. It's a good payday. Sure. Very good payday. Nice confidence booster heading into the World 10 ball later on in the week. Chance for another big payday. That one has $200,000 in price funds. 60,000 first prize, I believe. I believe it is. 64 players. Caught him a little bit that time. Not a big spread. How's this three ball combo looking? It's definitely close. Not as good as that three ball combo looked in the last match that was lined up in the side. I remember. That, kick yeah. shot. <laughs> well, that, that looks a little off, but it's very playable. Yeah, I, I think he plays it. You just got to cut it just a little bit on the right side. Yeah, it's lying pretty dead. I think the biggest question is how does the one play off the five? I think it'll likely open up off the short rail. Five got on yeah, the way. Gonna have to play another is combo. Is he gonna get behind the three? Yes, Jeez, he that's, is. That's a tough <laughs> roll there. Ouch. I know exactly what went through his mind, and I can't say it. <laughs> Even though it's in Spanish, I just can't say it. <laughs> Be pretty colorful, though. <laughs> Carlo Viado, the premier Predator player, has been for some time. Too much to think about here. Just kind of weighing up the angle. What a good hit. Yeah. Got coverage with the five. He bent that pretty well. Tough to judge those ones where the, you're kicking with the cue ball really close to a rail. Made it. Yeah, wow, what a shot. Kewell didn't end up great on the two. In fact, ended up pretty bad. Can play the two up table and try to draw the cue wall back behind the 8 10 area. Gonna try to get behind the five. A little more control with follow here. 
How's the speed? Looking perfect. pretty good. Looks perfect. Safety is getting on point now from both players. Lee Van Cortesa came back from a 3-2 deficit to win the set against Ko Ping Chung. They're going into a second set. Oh, look at this cue ball nestle up against the 10 behind the 8. Yeah, even getting him that badly behind the 5 wasn't good enough. Kick safe, very nice. Breeze will have a chance to kick this two ball in. Cue ball's gonna be playing towards the 10. That's tight going by that seven, isn't it? Is he gonna have to bend it a little bit? Can hit or the second rail so he can play longer. Cue ball ended up good. That was the two over the side, in the side. Well, yeah. He says, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Go right ahead. Well, Sells a shot to win the game. It's this a is a... Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, this is, this is a shot that he can handle. Yeah, it's a long jump, but the angle's reasonable. Got it. Shot. And handle it, he did. Carlos says, oh my, I should have done that. Stun that on that angle nicely. All routine for the next five balls. We'll see how if Ruiz can get something going off the break here. Shots like that are the kind of shots that pump Ruiz up too, right? Mm -hmm. He's you know he's a he's a high gear type player and kind of. A little shot like that can get him going real good. You can see it in his step around the table here. Helps that all the balls are easy, but you can tell he's just got his eye on the prize still. Tied at one. In January of 24, 128-24, Sanchez beats Beato 10-9 in the Indonesia International Open. And then beats him again in the 12th of January in the Universal Chinese Taipei Open. Yeah, Ruiz played uh, a couple tournaments hold, over in Southeast hold on Asia. A second. Big smash from Ruiz, getting the four railer almost. Nothing down. Two's going to come in between the cue ball and the one, maybe. Mm. 
Oh, he's straight in. Good roll for Beato here. Was playing him into the two. I think it's time for Beato to come up with a jump of his own here. Tricky one. You'd have to get the cue up and down quick. Haven't seen Beato really favor the jump cue. I've seen him kick in a lot of spots, considering it here. Well, they've played six times, and they're three and three. Okay. What would you say the biggest stage they played on was? Chinese Open. Chinese Taipei. Okay. Who won that they, one? They also played in the Hanoi Open. The Chinese Open was won by Francisco, but Carlo won the championship, so I'm kind of doubting my information That's here. odd. Yeah. Well, what happens with this app that I have is sometimes it reverses the players. Well, it could have been a redraw format. He might have beat him earlier could in be. the tournament and then came back in the redraw format. But the Hi Hanoi Open, uh, Carlo, uh, sh it shows Carlo beating Francisco 10 to 6. Okay. Nice shot there from Beato. It shows Francisco winning the U.S. Open uh, Championships at Harris in 2022, 11 to 10 over Beato. That would be the biggest one, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So some history with these players played in the final of the U.S. Open. I forgot that, actually. Ruiz doing well to get out of that safe. Looks like Beato's going to have to play another one here. Could bank the four, the three around four rails between the four or five. A little bit tricky with the cue ball control on that play. Just backed off. One pocket type shot. Good shot there. Left an edge, actually. A lot of the Filipino players finding some added, added revenue playing one pocket now, if you've noticed. Yeah, they're mastering it, really. Yeah. Beato doesn't play it much, but when he does, he does well. They're, at their level, it doesn't take much to pick up the little nuances of the game. And the best out in one pocket is eight and out. Sure. They're very good at that. <laughs> filler. That's filler yeah. style. Oh, look at this. Oh, Cuba making it behind the five wow. or behind the nine. That's like the third time he's done that to himself. Yeah, just not quite firing at all cil cylinders here. And it's, it's going to become a bit of a problem pretty quick if he doesn't turn it around. Made the hit. Watch out for the cue ball. Got away with that. Left the five.
great chance for Biata here to take the lead again in the second set. Already leading by one set, best of three sets format. Stop position on the next three balls. Decided to move the cue ball a little bit there, like that, like this type of position for the nine more. They played. He's been breaking from the side rail. He's made the one on the side a couple times. So look for him to have a chance to break and run this next rack. Two to one. Two games away from putting it away. And moving into the final match. He will be playing, if he moves into it, the winner of this match will be playing Lee Van Corteza or Koping Chung in the finals. Which will be, I believe, 8.30? 5.30 for the men's final, oh, okay. 8, 8 o'clock for the women's final. Women's semifinals will be coming up at 3, at three o'clock. Mm -hmm. Next round, 3 o'clock Pacific time. Stand starting to fill up here, even on the outer tables. Outer seats, people lining up over there. There goes the one. Two's there. Ideally would like to be able to beat the scratch on the side. He can. Going in front of it. Play the cue ball across. Over to the right long rail. What a good shot to perfect. contend with that side pocket and hit it with perfect speed and perfect angle. Yeah, perfect cue ball control there. Rest of the rack's pretty open, just has to stay in line. A lot of players probably wouldn't even shoot that thinking they might scratch in the side. Sure. Might be a little straight, have to come into the short side of the six. If there's any angle going to the left, he'll take it. It's fine, as long as he doesn't get straight. Got some angle going forward. Diagonal draw, two rails back into the angle. Typical pattern that comes up a lot in rotation. It's 
Rafa always got a nice angle to move towards the next ball. Never see him get straight in. Cue ball control is just on point. Strong outing for Carlo Viado. Yeah, second break and run of the match. And he'll be looking to close it out with another one here. Our referee, Perry Anderson. And I think we have the young lady from uh, Canada as a timekeeper. Valerie Bernard. Bedard. Yep, great player in her, in her own right. Good ambassador for billiards in Quebec. Just been hitting the break kind of medium speed. Really getting down the attack angle. He wants to push that one towards the side pocket. Short of the side this time. Ten ball goes in. No shot on the one. Bunch of congestion over on the right side of the table. Did the ref just pick up the cue ball by accident? He did. So we're going to have to replace <laughs> it somehow. <laughs> Oops. Uh, oh, we, boy. We will have to go back on stream. We, I don't, think have, you, uh, we don't have a playback. No? <laughs> I mean, he's in a pushing situation, so it wouldn't affect too much. I think both players are, can kind of just agree. Yeah. We don't have a playback, but here, look look at this real quick. Uh, this is actually the YouTube, and it's got quite a lag, so we'll be able to see it on YouTube. Well, since I'm YouTube, I'll say hello to the chat. Hello, everybody there. Pro uh, level, Luke Walker. Who else do I see out there? Planet Media. Carrie Ann, she's always in the, the chats. Get that out of the way. Oh, I wish they would get that out of the way so we could see it. You had it right there, but this will take a little bit. Let's get a full screen on here. It had to be where I was standing. No fast forward. <laughs> what did you do, pick up the cue ball? Yeah, I don't even know what the fuck I was thinking. <gasps> no, no, we're on the <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I know you're on the air. I bet the chat's going to have a great time with oh, that they one. They me. usually do. They're going to love me. <laughs> Harry from Ohio, I'll tell you. There that. you go. Okay, here's the break. Here comes the break. We're just, uh, now you know how much of a lag there is, folks, when you're watching this live. Yeah, it's too bad we don't have replay over on, on this equipment here. Only on the main one. This I didn't isn't even uh, the same rack. This isn't even the same rack. Wow. Yeah, this is way late. <laughs> All right, we're just going to replace the cue ball as close as we thought it was. Honest mistake there by the ref. Things happen. Carl will be pushing here. Oh, 
Oh, I, I, here it is. Too late now. Good push by Carlo, tempting Francisco to be to take a kick at this ball. It was right. I, I got it. It was right. It was right there. Where yeah, they, they put it. They, they put it back where it needed to be. Two balls banking into the five a little bit here. Avoided nicely by Ruiz. Beato's put some big pressure on him here in both sets, coming with some breaking runs. Very few missed balls by both players. Good hit by Beato. Looks like the 8 10 is going to come in as blockers. Nice shot there. He's on a guaranteed hit here. Probably call the corner pocket. Ruiz considered the jump. Gonna go for it in the side. Missed it by the smallest of margins there. Yeah, I was going to be able to beat the scratch here. Q will be playing naturally across for the three. Just has to focus on pocketing the two. Call the 10? I don't know, but uh, Ruiz better hit the two here. <laughs> he better hit it, and it's tough to hit. I think he might have the shortest rail over to the right long rail. He's got a little space so he can spin it down there. Oh, it's big. If he gets to the bottom rail and hits the deuce, it slides right over. Might follow it in. It's hanging pretty close, so. Careful not um, to follow in the That's tent. a big part of it, too. You could hit yeah. it and not make it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that'll do it. And that will close out the match. This 3-10 uh, combo for a 4-1 to one victory Beato in the be second in, set. Yeah, Beato will be moving on to the final here. And on to the finals we go. Good sportsmanship, love to see that. Carlo Viado to meet Lee Van Corteza or Ko Ping Chung in the final match coming to you at 5.30 Pacific time. Eric, summarize this match for us real quick. That was quick. a great match. I mean, Viado came with a break and run in the middle of both sets, and those are big in this short race format. He's playing well. Look for him to be a real threat in the final. We'll be, and that, that'll take place at 5.30 Pacific today. It's great to be with you guys. For George THA, it's Eric Wolfson. Talk to you soon.